Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be discussing a special test that's used to evaluate for the presence of posterior ankle impingement, and that is what's called the heel thrust test. Now, with posterior ankle impingement, oftentimes what you'll see is plantar flexion and sometimes inversion, but especially plantar flexion of the ankle is painful, and it's because something in the back of the ankle is blocking that movement. One of the most common reasons that could be blocked is an os trigonum, which is an accessory bone that is not present in the vast majority of the population. In fact, only about, depending on the source, 10 to 20% of people actually have this bone. And a very small percentage of those people is it actually symptomatic. So if you suspect somebody might have posterior ankle impingement, this is a good test to do. So the way this test is conducted, the patient will be in supine or long sitting, doesn't really matter, but basically the heel and the ankle of the test side leg need to be over the edge of the table as you can see right here. Now I'm the PT right here, so I'm gonna have my hand underneath uh, their distal lower leg here for support. And then I'm gonna actually use my other hand in just a minute and I'm gonna use carpal contact under the patient's calcaneus as you see right here. Okay. Also notice their ankle is in about 30 to 45 degrees of plantar flexion when I am doing this. Again, the issue with posterior ankle impingement is during plantar flexion. So if we did this test in a neutral position or dorsiflexion, it's not gonna have the same effect as if we did it in plantar flexion. So hopefully that makes sense. Now what you're gonna see in just a second is I'm gonna use my hand here on the patient's calcaneus and I'm gonna drive it into the talus and then into the ankle mortis. But as opposed to how the, the name of the test suggests I should do this with a thrust, I'm actually gonna do it slowly at first. And the reason I'm gonna do it slowly is because if I do it slowly and it's painful with that and it reproduces their familiar pain, I should say, there's no reason to do a thrust. I don't wanna to torture the patient any more than they might already be tortured by having this impingement. So if just doing it without any speed, a non-thrust, I guess you could say, if that is painful, automatically I'm not gonna do the thrust, it's a positive test. So let's take a look at that. So drive that in right there and assess for a pain response. If that is painful, you stop, it's a positive test. And understand, it's only positive if it reproduces their familiar posterior ankle pain. If it reproduces another pain, then you might be able to do the thrust, maybe a little light at first. But if it reproduces their familiar pain, you stop. If it doesn't reproduce their familiar pain like that, then we can proceed into the thrusts. And again, the way I do it is I perform those quick thrusts with gradually increasing force. I'm not just gonna go in and just drive it in as hard as I can, I'm gonna gradually build into the force that I'm using with the thrust. Let's take a look at that. So a little bit lighter, gradually increasing force every single time I perform this thrust. If at any point during that, that reproduces their familiar posterior ankle pain, that also is a positive heel thrust test, okay? And it would be somewhat diagnostic of posterior ankle impingement, but we have to be careful with interpreting that result because there are no psychometrics established for this test. Posterior ankle impingement is not near as common as a lot of other ankle and foot conditions, so it has not been extensively studied. There's no specificity or sensitivity for this test. So just be cautious with interpreting the result of this test. However, it stands to reason that what you're doing is you're reproducing that compression on whatever structure is impinging the ankle posteriorly into plantar flexion. So if you are able to reproduce that, it's probably reasonable to say that they have posterior ankle impingement. But you also do need to be careful with your interpretation of that. If you have an x-ray for that ankle, and it has to be that ankle, it can't be the opposite side, and they do have an os trigonum in there, you may be able to infer that this is os trigonum syndrome, and it's the os trigonum that's causing the impingement. But if you have an x-ray that does not have an os trigonum, or you don't even have an x-ray, so you can't say for sure there's an os trigonum, you cannot say this is os trigonum syndrome. 
you may be able to say it's posterior impingement syndrome, but it may be warranted to get an x-ray if you don't have that already. And if there is no evidence of an os trigonum, or in some cases, a styeda process, we'll be going over those in other videos uh, pretty soon, um, then you need to consider another diagnosis or another cause of that posterior ankle impingement. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the heel thrust test, how to perform it, and also how to interpret it. Please make sure to like my video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you so much.